consider doing pillow inserts and pillow covers instead of buying holes in pillows. When styling your pillows, remember to style them in groups of three, but also at different sizes and textures. Hello guys, hi, I'm so excited. I am going to be uh, sharing today um, about how to make music, um, how to write a song, you know. Um, some people have said that it's really hard to write a song. Um, no one has actually taught me how to write a song. I just grew up, just de developed my own mentor and I just wrote my songs, you know, based off of the way I choose, you know, I didn't have any formal um, training on how to actually write a song. My dad is a musical artist, and, but he didn't even teach me how to write a song. Um, so I just learned this myself. And I typically have two mentored, two easy mentored that I believe it's easy that I have been writing my songs um, over the years. And one I call the rhythm mentored and the other one I call um, the topic mentored. So I just came up with these names because I want to teach on it. So because I want to teach on it, I want to give it a name. It's not a formal name you're going to find in a textbook or whatever. So yeah. Um, okay. So let me um, go on ahead and just dive in. Okay. I have my notes here just in case you uh, find me looking over here. I have my notes over here. Um, so the things that you would need typically before you start writing a song, the thing that you would um, need, you would need a phone, you need, you need a phone or any kind of recording device. This is because um, you don't want to lose what you've worked on. Apart from having a paper, you would need a paper and a pen, okay? A paper and a pen um, and a recording device, most likely going to be your phone. Um, so the reason why you want to have your phone, even if you have a paper and a pen and you're writing down the, whatever you, you want to, um, compose or whatever, you may just forget what you've just created because you're going to be working with rhythms and all of that and beats. You may have just forgotten it. So you need a recording. So even if you are not sure, you're not making a concrete finalized, um, music or song from what you're doing right now is like it's like a sketch or whatever roughly put together sketch it's good to have that recording so that you can go back and see what you've done because with time you may just divert from what you initially created and you may like that you initially created or you may just forget what you created like you may create you may create something in the morning and then find out that you can't remember it you know sometime when when i started writing songs i used to like have some inspiration of songs come to my mind and then I just start singing it. I won't really have a lyric for it yet. It's just like a rhythm and everything. And then I just start singing it and I didn't even know to write it down or to record it. Like no one guided me on that. Even though my daddy sang, he didn't guide me on that. So, and he didn't really know when I started like writing songs even. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll just have this inspiration come and then I'll forget it like for two days or so. And then I remember it again, like after some days and I'll be like, wow, this song, I can't remember it, but you, you never know because you may forget everything you create. So you need that recording. You need that device to record whatever you're creating. You need a pen, like I already said, and a paper to write down what your inspiration the, for the lyrics. Um, you need, you need a rhythm and also you need uh, the meaning of this song. You need the meaning. We, you just cannot just start writing the song or whatever. You have to have a meaning to this. The song have to have a meaning. So that meaning, that theme, that topic that you're actually going to base the whole um, song on, you need it so that it can guide you on what you're writing. And then you need a rhythm. So I think I've said, five things now that you need. You need the a recording device, very important. Even if you don't have a pen and a pen, um, pen and a paper, you can definitely remember what you, you can definitely hear what you've already constructed from the 
recording device. You need a recording device, most likely your phone. You need a pen and a paper. You need the meaning of the song, the main topic, and you need um, a rhythm, like the, the way the pattern of the song goes, the beat and everything. So um, these two different parts, these two types of um, means of making a song, the rhythm method and the topic method, even though I have said this, I've used those words in the description of what you need there this i'm going to dive into what this how you can actually make your um, song using this methods so the first method is a rhythm method this is kind of fun the the rhythm of the the music comes first it takes priority over the actual meaning of the song or over or it takes priority over what the song is about so um how would I put it? What is a rhythm? A rhythm is a, is a pattern of beats and silence. A pattern of beats and silence. What does that mean? Like beats, pattern of beats. You have to have a pattern to it, right? These are like beats, right? And then you have a, silent, a silence. You have a silent moment between the beats, like silence, silence, silence. So let me create something more fun. So this is like a rhythm, right? Okay, so this rhythm method has parity. It takes the rhythm takes parity over the actual meaning. Actually, you start making the song, you start constructing the song using rhythms before you even put down the lyrics. So you probably want the song to flow in a certain way. You have this vibe and you want to see it come alive. You want people to vibe to this song this way. Mm, you, want it to, you want it to be like this. You want, you know, that takes parity. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the message of the song is not important, but you want the song to flow this way. So you're going to construct the rhythm of the whole skeleton of the um, of the rhythm, you're going to construct that before you start putting the flesh, which is like the lyrics. You you finish finalize the um, the rhythm before. This is like um, it's like um, if you buy a bit, like I have once bought a bit for all of my songs. I have just one time but a bit that is already made and finished it does not have any connection to me or any song in fact for that beat i'll go i'll go into this so you can literally buy a beat that is made by a beat producer you buy the beats and then you put you you find a lyric that you want based off of the message of your song you write the lyric but now you cannot alternate the beat or the rhythm because it's already made so you have to make sure that whatever lyric you're writing, it flows with the beat. You construct it with the way the beat goes, with the way the rhythm goes. You construct it and keep reconstructing it till it fits. Now the beat, the beat or the rhythm is like a pointer to how the song is going to go or how it's going to flow. The rhythm comes second. You get? So, um... This is something that, this is one way that I make songs. Um, I think I make, I don't know how many percent of my songs that I make like this. Yeah, I think a lot because I usually start off with a rhythm in my head and how it flows. If I like it, then I put the, the lyrics to it, you know? Yeah. So you make a rhythm for the verse. So when you make a rhythm for the verse, you have a rhythm that you want and you like. Maybe it starts off slow, you know, something that goes slowly. <laughs> Whatever. So if you have a verse that starts off very well, slow or however you want it to start, you like that, you like the rhythm for that verse, then you can use it for as many verses you want, the same rhythm. So you're gonna typically have three, three, you're gonna typically, typically be creating 
three different rhythms for the verse, the chorus, and if you have a bridge for the song, the bridge. So you create the rhythm for the verse. If you have a rhythm that you already like, that is going to start off the song for the verse, you can use that same rhythm for the second verse and for the third and the fourth, depending on how many verses you have. Then when you go with that, you can now create another different kind of um, rhythm for the chorus. They may not be similar. They may be different. They may not like they, it won't be the same rhythm you're creating for the chorus and for the rhythm, but they, they, they must be able to like, um, be merged. They should be able to com combine. So when you put the verse rhythm with the, um, with the rhythm for the chorus you just made, they should be able to flow well together. Even if the pitch or the, the tempo goes high and is, you know, but they have to flow well together. So yeah, you create um, a, a, a different rhythm for, for the chorus now. You create a new rhythm for the chorus. And like I said, they, it has to be able, the two different rhythms, the ones for the verses that are the same and the one for the chorus you, you get, you, you, they should be able to like come together and flow well. Like when, when, you, in, when you're going, coming from the verse, you should be able to flow well into the um, into the chorus rhythm. You'll be making different rhythms for these two. And then you will do the same for um, a bridge. You make a different rhythm for the bridge. If you have a bridge in your song, you make a different rhythm for it. And it's not hard. You just, off of, you can build off of what you've already created for the verse. You can, um, when you create a rhythm for the verse and you like it, you can just alternate it a little bit. Make it more funky, make it more alive from the verse, the rhythm for the verse. And then you adopt that for the chorus and also for the bridge. Um, I believe I'll be putting, I'll be putting some examples um, on this video for um, some songs. I think the latest one that I just did, how I did it. I think I still have the recordings from however, when I, when I started in, you know, writing the song. And what you'll find out is that the first time I started getting the inspiration for the songs, especially for the rhythm method, I just mumble. I just do like, I don't really say anything. The main important thing was the rhythm. I'm just creating the rhythm. And while I'm creating the rhythm, I will just, um, I will just like say things that I say words that don't have meaning just to, you know, structure that rhythm. So you, you might find me saying or mumbling, some words that don't really have make any meaning, but just because I'm trying to form the rhythm and I wasn't really saying anything meaningful or making the rhythm, but I'm just trying to like, you know, um, make the rhythm out. So when I'm done with the rhythm and it's, the structure is good for the, for the verse and for the chorus, I actually make separate, um, recordings for that. And then I come back and write the lyrics for it. So yeah, you can, you have to like keep working on, when you're done with making the rhythms for everything you need, you have to keep working on the lyrics. You may have to chop off some part of the lyrics or reconstruct the way the words are being said, or, you know, shorten the words or lengthen the words, you know, or just use different words just so that you, it will fit this, um, it's just, just so that it will fit this um this rhythm that you just built or the beat you bought you get this is the way i made the song um father that i already made this is how i made it i literally bought a beat from online for the first time and that was the only time i did and then i had to like walk with the the beats of the song and actually wrote down everything you know and you can either make as you are the one constructing if you are the one constructing the rhythms yourself, you know, bringing the rhythms to life, you have to make the beats from scratch. You have to meet someone that creates beats and ask them to make a beat for you, you know, you know, so they make a beat for you based off of the rhythm. They take your rhythm and then you must have already have, have the, after making the rhythm, you, ha you already have to like put the lyrics. You have to work on the lyrics. When you're done working on the lyrics, 
and the rhythm, you have your song, then you give it to the beat producers and they, they make the beats for you. Or you actually buy the beats. This time you're not going to be brainstorming or trying to construct a rhythm for yourself. You're just going to buy a beat without constructing any rhythm in your head. Just buy a beat and put a lyrics to it. So, um, just like that's just basically everything for the rhythm method. It doesn't mean you have to lose the message. You just have to find a, a way to convey the message, construct the message so that it will still be heard the way you want it to be heard. But the rhythm takes priority because it comes first. For the um, topic method, it's called the topic method. I call it topic method because um, the topic is priority. Like, you have a topic and you have beautifully written this the, the the lyrics of this song before you even you know designed how it's gonna sound you've written out and you want it to be heard or received in this way with these words these words are so important to you you believe that when people hear it this way with these words and lyrics it will it will assimilate so based off of that, you are going to prioritize the topic, the message of the song first. Then you start writing that. You start writing the, um, you, you literally start writing the lyrics till you're done with it. Everything, brass, chorus, and the bridge, or if you have a bridge. All of that, you do it. When you're done, then you have to start working on the rhythm. Now it's going to be the rhythm where the burden is going to be because you're going to have to find a rhythm that covers or envelopes these lyrics that you've written. Now for this method, the topic method, because you're going to be writing the, the lyrics, the message of this song before you actually think about the rhythm and the beat for it. But with this method, you have no other choice but to make the beat for this song from scratch. You have to meet a beat producer when you're done with making the lyrics when you're done with making the lyrics and how you want it you're done with making the lyrics right and then you are you are brainstormed and thought about how this song is going to flow you try to construct it you know you try to construct a rhythm for this song and finally you're done with constructing a rhythm that that envelopes this song you have to find a beat producer to make the beat for you based off of the lyric and the way you've sang it after you've made the rhythm because sometimes you have no choice um, you have a project and the project you are focusing on this topic and you um, have to let the world see this topic or hear this message this way and you then after making the lyrics you you, you go on ahead and find a rhythm that covers it then you have to go on ahead and um, produce the beat from scratch. I have made songs like this. It's not as much. I can number, I can number them. Um, it's not really how I typically do it, but I also use this method, topic method, uh, to do my songs too. So yeah, you prioritize, you prioritize, um, the message more than the way the song flows. You prioritize the message more than the way the song is, is more than the way the song will flow. You don't really care for now what this how the vibe is gonna be how what the song how it's gonna flow you are more you're more you more your more focus is the message when you're done with that then you can figure out how it's gonna flow what the rhythm is gonna be and you know what the beat is gonna be yes um you cannot like I already said I'm just like repeating you cannot buy a beat with for this song you cannot buy a finished beat because whatever finished beat is out there is not going to take into consideration what you've written down so you have to buy you have to make a beat from scratch someone is going to from from the, um, the very scratch start making a beat for you for your song and um, like I said for the other method the other G other method which is the rhythm method you try to like change your lyrics to fit the rhythm for this method which is the topic method after you finish writing the lyrics you try to construct and reconstruct and reconstruct the rhythm till you find a perfect rhythm that works you you keep reconstructing you don't change the lyrics you don't do anything to the lyrics 
What you focus on reconstructing is the rhythm or how it flows till you find a perfect rhythm that, that makes the song feel the way you want it to feel or to be heard the way you want it to be heard. Okay, the last thing I would say, I think the topic mental is easy to understand. The last thing, the last thing I would say here is that after you finish um, making your, for the topic method, after you finish writing your lyrics and it's down and you are trying your utmost best for years to um, make a rhythm for this song and you're not just finding anything that fits. The words are too large. The words are, it's too much. You have a lot of words and, or maybe the words is just too small and <laughs> Maybe the words are just, you know, you just cannot find any rhythm that works. You're seeing, you wrote something down and it says, for example, I'm a Christian. And I just, I really just, I always, why did I say that? I always, <laughs> I always um, make Christian music like, you know. Um, so whenever I use an example, I'm probably going to be using something that has God in it. So, for example, if you write something that says, um, God is the most faithful and is the most loving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you you can you're like trying to find a rhythm that goes with it. You're, you're trying to find a rhythm that will take up that word. You know, maybe that is the first line of your lyric, the the verse of the song. And you're like, God is the God is the most faithful, the most the most like it's not going you're like okay god god is the most faithful god is oh it's not going like okay um, i hope you guys understand what i'm trying to say because if you if you don't understand you'll be like what is this girl doing <laughs> so i'm typically trying to like have a rhythm for this length of words maybe the words are trying to like the words in the lyrics is too much and you just cannot find a rhythm for it what you'll probably do is maybe even though the topic here is most important, I'll just help you to just let you know that you may want to like change or adjust the words or, you know, try to like, if you cannot find any rhythm, if you've tried your best and you're using the topic mentored and you cannot find a rhythm that goes with this song that you finished writing and you're using the topic mentored because you're prioritizing the, the words and how it goes, you're prioritizing the message and how the, the wordings are being put together and how the, the message is put together. If you're prioritizing that and you're looking for now, you're now looking for a lyric. I mean, what am I saying? You're not looking for um, a, a rhythm that flows well and you're not finding any rhythm. You've been sleeping over this. You've been on this for, for months and for weeks. I'll just say just try and rephrase your word like change the, the words just maybe use another word shorten the, the the you know the wordings of the lyrics but still do not lose your message you probably would do this for maybe the first verse only maybe there's some there's one um lyric there that's just too long you know you can just do maybe for just two in just two parts of the of the lyrics and that's just it, you know, just to make it easier for you. You may want to like change some words or shorten it or increase it. It may, like I said, the wordings and the message take priority. But changing anything here is just going to be for maybe a little bit, a little part of the song. It's not going to be every everything, right? So maybe just try doing that so that you can have um, your project, so that you can have your project finish, finished. Okay, so yeah, so that's it for it. Basically, once you have your, basically, once you have your, um, your lyric, whether you're using the reading method or whether, or whether you're reason, using the topic method, once you have your, your lyric and you have your rhythm, your lyric and your rhythm, you go on ahead to um, create your beat, you know, if you're building your beat from scratch, you know, that's, you know, you, you go on ahead and do that. Or you buy a beat, a, a fresh beat. So you can only buy a fresh beat with the rhythm method because you're going to build your rhythm first before you put in your lyrics. You can only buy your beat with the rhythm method and you can also build it from scratch. 
But for the topic mentor, you cannot buy a bit. You're, you're building first on your lyrics, so you won't, be, you won't have the option of buying a bit from online or from anyone. You just build, you finish your lyrics and then you have to build your, your beat or your rhythm from scratch. Um, yeah, I will, I'll try my best to put an example below. I know, I remember that I used, I used um, the rhythm method for my, my song, The Father, because I bought the beat. And I also, for the new song I just finished off, um, Unnatural, um, I wrote the, I used the rhythm method, but I built the beat from scratch. I used the rhythm method. Yeah, so I think so. I'm just gonna like leave an example, maybe one or two down below for you all to see. I will believe, I will believe, I will believe every word you say, be it not a Although I don't, although it don't seem wrong, I will believe every word you say, so it all is I will believe 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 I